Negative people love to hang out with negative people. Love hanging out with each other and saying why everybody else is fucked up. My mom fucked up. Our boss fucked up. The CEO fucked up. Billionaires fucked up. Gen Z fucked up. The millennials fucked up. When did you fuck up? When did you fuck up? How many questions did you get? I didn't count, but a lot. What do you think? 60. I love it. I can't wait to, this is like a fun new format we're thinking about which is like things like that stress me out. I've been stressed all day that we weren't gonna get to everybody and so, so many people want the question. And so now it's like even more fun, right? Because at my live events, we'll record them. I'm gonna answer them all. We may not post them all. But if you asked, if they asked, I'm gonna fucking find a way to answer them all even if we have to send the people one-on-one or put them on the Ask Gary B, Team Gary account or whatever we figure the fuck out. But um, really fun new innovation on dealing with the reality of the supply and demand of our new realities. Um, and just a lot of like fun people, people flying in from Romania, people flying in from fucking, you know, like down the street, all walks of life, all different scenarios, all different challenges, all different opportunities, all different levels of happiness uh, and hope, optimism and delusion. And that's just like the world, right? The world is just filled with so many different truths and people's truths change hour by hour, day by day. People's truths have changed in line today since VCon. Right, there are many people I saw in Minnesota in May that have a different reality right now in late July in seven weeks. Somebody got sick, something popped off in a good way. And so, you know, everyone's always looking for answers when answers are always changing and evolving based on the questions and questions are coming up on a daily basis. So this is not about a tactical, like here's the blueprint, go do this. This is about a perspective and a, and a sustainable mental framework that allows you to deal with anything and everything and that is grounded in gratitude and that is grounded in practical optimism and that is grounded tactically in underpriced attention and opportunities. That's why you're gonna hear from me so much about Facebook pages and YouTube shorts now because the, the attention and where you need to put your energy, your output, your content, your information, your music, your art, your ideas, your business development, those will change. Um, but what everyone is in search of and in need of is a sustainable mental framework. And, and that is what I'm gonna continue to work on, which is like, if you're able to see the world through the eyes of attacking hate with love, through the eyes of tenacity and work ethic are part of the formula, thus find something you like, otherwise you won't be able to work that hard. You know, if, if you're able to figure that out, if you are stuck in a nine to six, or even a nine to nine, because you have two jobs and your situation's such a challenge because you're feeding four people in your home as a single parent and you've got two jobs, you're nine to nine, the question is can one of those, because one of them's just extra cash, instead of having a five to nine where you're actively doing something, can you get a five to nine for the same $15 an hour at a store or be a receptionist or a night guard where you can work on your phone while you actually do your job, right? It's like. You know, to me, the, you know, this concept of people saying, well, I'm stuck, is just actually not true. It's true, because you think you're stuck. The actual world, God, the world, doesn't think you're stuck. You just haven't figured out the move you have to make to unstuck you and unstick you. And that's exactly what I just said in that little scenario right now, which is like you're working five to nine, but like you're doing something that doesn't let you be on your phone, but you switch it and get paid the same amount and sit at a chair that's not bothered often, security guard, retail cash register, where it's not a busy store, uh, front uh, secretary, uh, you know, <laughs> driving Ubers around and every time you're da- not driving, like maybe that's half and half there. These, I'm just spinning here free flow about you're not stuck. You might have it much more challenging than others. That's why I go so crazy about 20 year olds. 20 year olds, so many of them don't have the handcuffs. That's why I'm so passionate about 20 to 30. I'm not less passionate about 50 to 90. It's just that 50 to 90 comes with baggage, comes with being a little stuck. Children, mortgages, debt. 20 to 30 comes with just opportunity and just gotta get the fuck out of the school system and parents' traditional bullshit points of view. They have plenty of good points of view. This is not binary. Parents are the best, parents are the worst. School's the best, school's the worst. I'm the best, I'm the worst. Everything is both. Everybody just wants to be one thing. It's gotta be all blue. 
It's gotta be all red. It's fucking purple, motherfuckers. It's always purple. Nothing's binary, but what is binary is if you are pessimistic and you say you're stuck, then it's over. If you've decided it's over, there ain't no fucking video I can make to make you unover. Or there is, which is why I'm motivated to do it. The fact that one human being can say one thing at the right second to another human being that can fundamentally change the process of their life because they have now decided to open up a different perspective and see the world differently is the most intoxicating, most powerful reason that human beings are the best in the world and I will continue to be one small version of a human being, one of many millions of people that are out there and I don't don't know if I think it's billions but I definitely think it's tens of millions and I do believe it's hundreds of millions do I think it's 12% of people? Maybe not, but, but I definitely think there are tens to hundreds of millions of people who get deep happiness for themselves out of trying to be a communicator to help others. Some do it at the highest level of distribution like me, others do it for their just their child, thus making me change my mind. It is billions of people. It is billions of people. There's absolutely over a billion people on earth that are passionate to use their words to make somebody's life better. It's called parenting. And so fuck, what are we doing here? Like enough, enough. Let this be the rant in the back of a car this time, what was supposed to be a two second recap of this fucking Fox signing (laughs) in LA. Let this little rant be the one that says, he's fucking right. Because if you say I'm wrong, nobody's gonna be able to help you. You're gonna be the only person that's able to help yourself. And if you think the people that are using fear and negativity to get your attention and you're saying they're right, they're just selling you darkness and you're buying it. And for some reason you think that if you take that darkness and then you deploy hating somebody else, a system, a government, a president, hating a gender, a race, a person that looks different than you, that you're gonna take your unhappiness, you're gonna repackage it because somebody got into your head and you're gonna use that as hate to tear down somebody else because you think that's gonna be good for you? You think that's gonna be good for you? You're fucking losing out here, partner. You're fucking losing out here, my friend. If you're fucking spending your time hating on others, canceling people on the left, hating on people on the right, country to country, religion to religion, if you're watching this in the Middle East, in Eastern Europe, in America, trying to divide people, even within your own family, you're mad at your brother because he's happy and successful, that's on you. He's not trying to make you feel bad. He's just happy, he can't help but project it. He's happy. And so what, you're mad at him? You wanna tear him down? You wanna talk shit to your other siblings or your parents about him because he's happy? This is an inside game. It's you versus you. It's you with you. It's only you and you. And too many of you right now are succumbing to consuming darkness. And that's your fucking fuck up. So take on the accountability, take on the accountability and say it's my job to start being more optimistic and happier and I'm going to seek out humans and content that does that. This is the first day that I'm gonna go on the mental scale. Just like when you have to lose 30 pounds, you go on the scale and you're like, okay, I'm a buck 90, I gotta get to 160. Let this be the video, let this be the second in your life that you get on the mental scale and say, I'm too cynical, I'm too scared. I'm frightened, I'm insecure, which is why all this other bad shit's happening, and I'm ready to do something about it, and that first thing to do is to cut out the negativity in your life. Cut the news the fuck out, cut all the people in your fucking social that are fucking negative, cut the people in your real life, cut them down. You don't have to cancel and completely cut out your mom, you just might be able to talk to her once a month for five minutes instead of three times a day for 15 and just have her talk negative nonsense to you. You know, that's the biggest issue that people, people hear me, they're like, I can't cut my brother out. I don't want you to. I want you to cut down your brother. Limit your brother. If your brother is fucking bringing negativity to you an hour at a time every single day, that is seeping into your soul. And look around your homies. Negative people love to hang out with negative people. Negative people love to hang out with negative people. You just sit in a fucking circle on your text thread or in your fucking, at your fucking coffee shop in the morning or after work at the bar or on the softball team or in the office. You just love hanging out with each other and saying why everybody else is fucked up. 
Joe Biden fucked up. Donald Trump fucked up. My mom fucked up. Our boss fucked up. The CEO fucked up. Billionaires fucked up. Gen Z fucked up. The millennials fucked up. When did you fuck up? When did you fuck up? You know what keeps me happy as fuck? I talk to myself more about what I fucked up about than what I've accomplished. And let me make it very clear to you, I'm incredibly proud of how big one list is versus the other, and yet, all my focus goes on to the accountability of what I suck at, and that doesn't bring me down, that makes me happy. Because I take on the accountability, I'm like, what can I do about it? How do I make it better? What can I do about it? Can that be apologizing to somebody? Or can that be about changing my behavior? Often both. Negative people think they're tricking somebody with their negative words. I come across negative people every day in my life and I listen to all of their nonsense and they really think they're tricking me into thinking it was someone else, it's fucking you. If you can afford it, therapy. If you can't afford it, use the free therapy that's on YouTube and podcasts every fucking day. <laughs> Fuck, do something about it. Because one day you're gonna wake up and it's gonna all be over and you're gonna be dead forever and you're gonna regret it. It's time, change your life because nobody else is gonna change it for you. There'll be people that come along that wanna be the assist. I'd love to be the assist. I'd love to fucking be the assist. Boy, would I love to be the assist. I'd love to bounce it right down the lane and have you dunk it, but I can't be the one that scores the points. That needs to be you.